Um, and uh, so our mission today, note, we're actually shorter lectures than uh, in X494 or XR course. Um, we're only 90 minutes, okay? Um, so we probably won't take a break midway through like we usually do in those other courses. Uh, we're just going to go right through, um, and uh, hopefully that'll be okay. Our mission today is to kind of introduce uh, what this course is and help you decide if it's going to be a good fit for you. Okay, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the workload of this course. We're going to talk about what kind of content and knowledge we're going to cover in this course, <clears throat> and uh, we'll do that in just a moment. Uh, we also have some assignments. We have we have a assignment to to uh, release. We're going to talk to you a little bit about what that involves. Hopefully, uh, you'll find it very enjoyable, uh, and we will see. Some quick announcements first. There was a major leak from Insomniac. Uh, I think a week or so ago. Insomniac, a very very um, prestigious first-party publisher uh, of Sony, typically. Uh, they have made games like uh, Marvel Spider-Man, uh, Ratchet and Clank, Spyro, uh, if you're looking for really classic stuff. Um, and unfortunately, um, they had a huge leak. A ton of stuff has been dumped. In fact, we know basically all the games they're working on uh, for the next 10 or so years. Um, and so it's a very sad thing if you happen to be on the Sucker Punch team you put in a ton of work and effort and you want to show that stuff, reveal it on your terms the way you want. But leaks like this are also pretty good for public knowledge, okay? As part of this leak set, I took a look. There's actually like executive leadership commentary on what Sony thinks of Microsoft's Game Pass, Right of what their rivals are doing, of how Sony's position in the industry currently is. Um, and that is extremely informative stuff as far as understanding this industry better. And when that stuff leaks to the public, the public gains a big knowledge boost. Um, so it's interesting. If it's uh, of interest to you, uh, then you can look through that if you want to. Um, a quick note, the course Canvas site is open. The Piazza, the Discord is open. If you don't have access to those things, then please send us an email as soon as you can so you can start doing your homework, okay? It launches today. Um, <clears throat> please read the syllabus uh, if you can on your own time. We'll cover some of the really important stuff at our next lecture, which is not going to be Monday. It's going to be Wednesday, right? Monday is MLK Day. Um, and um, <laughs> so please give the source course syllabus uh, a look if you can, all right? Office hours begin today, and they're literally after class. Um, we have office hours every single day. Wait, well, not quite. Let's see here. We have Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, okay? The Monday and Wednesday sessions happen literally at 6 o'clock after class ends, and I'll even be going from 7 to 8 for the XR students. Uh, and if there are no XR students, then you get additional office hours, okay? Um, so I encourage you, make use of this time if you can. Start your assignments early. You've heard that a thousand times but because you've taken my previous courses, you know I mean it, okay? Please start early. It will save you so much pain uh, and all that, okay? All right. Um, <clears throat> what else do we got? Um, be wary of your homework this week. The next two weeks, the homeworks are, I think, not too bad and not going to be too tough. Um, but please don't underestimate them. They will still take some time, especially if you don't have much experience in game engines, okay? Um, raise your hand if you've you've got some decent time in with an, at least one engine, right? Pretty much everyone. Um, if you're feeling courageous, raise your hand if you don't have so much time with any engine, okay? You're kind of new to it, okay? It's a new topic. All right, a good few of you. So the good news is that we do start pretty slowly in this course. You're going to have some time uh, to kind of get used to, wade into uh, some engines of your choice, Okay. And there will be plenty of guidance out there uh, and also from us to help you kind of get a feel for what engines are like um, before we start making our own, okay? Um, so don't worry too much, uh, but I definitely expect if you have played around with an engine a bit, you'll have a little bit of an easier time uh, in the beginning. All right, so a couple quick things uh, before we get into the um, what is this course <clears throat> if uh, you haven't taken a course with me, this might seem a little bit weird. When you get to the Canvas page, you'll see a bunch of buttons. One is for recordings. Um, this will have at least half of a recording after the uh, lecture is finished. I think I'm going to use Twitch uh, for lectures this semester because this is a really weird lecture hall. Uh, there's no built-in recording system, so I have to remember to do this. Please remind me if I don't 
uh, start streaming. Okay. Uh, at me somewhere. <coughs> um, there is a guide for uh, getting a job, getting internships in the games industry, um, how to build your portfolio, how to build your resume. Lots of advice from several different companies are on here, places you can apply, laboratories on campus you can apply to. So look through uh, this uh, guide and it may be of great help to you. The course Piazza is a good resource for asking questions. Okay, The Discord is basically where you'll be posting your work as you do your assignments, okay? You'll need to kind of post some footage uh, of the uh, stuff you do in this first two week, uh, and um, that should be kind of interesting. We have a button for the auto-grader dashboard. This is an auto-graded course. I'm super excited about that because grading is just never that fun, actually. And it also allows you to get feedback ultra fast, okay? We'll start doing C++ programming intensive auto-graded assignments beginning in about two weeks, okay? So look forward to that. I think you'll really enjoy that part um, as challenging as it may be, okay? Um, and if any auto grader like stops responding, the last update gets to be over like 20 minutes, let me know because it's probably dead, okay? And I'll go reboot it. <clears throat> in this course, a big question in any course is how much external help can you use? And of course, the hot topic of the day is AI help. Can you use UMGPT or ChatGPT4 uh, to help your, you know, help uh, in this course? Can you do it? Well, the answer is yes. Okay. Number one, because that genie just ain't going back in the bottle. Okay. Uh, and it's in general difficult to detect usage of that stuff in general. Okay. So have you used GBT? Anyone? AI assistance? Okay. Have you used AI assistance to help you program? If you haven't, something to note is that you probably don't have as good a memory for the APIs you're going to be using as GPT does, okay? And so it might feel a little bit weird, but I do encourage you, pretend you're at office hours. GPT, uh, I'm looking to make my first SDL render. Do you have any functions from the API that you recommend? And you'll get a list of functions most of them probably actually exist. And you can then experiment with them, interrogate GPT, ask about the pros and cons of each. And, you know, that's basically what we would do in office hours. Okay. In my experience, it's surprisingly good. Okay. So use <coughs> these AI assistants to accelerate your learning process, but do not use them as a replacement for it. Okay. Because there will come a time toward the end of the semester when you will be asked difficult questions on the exam without any sort of AI help, okay? When you learn and get new tips and knowledge from these AI assistants, try and understand them, truly, okay? Ask questions, right? Ask deeper questions. Interrogate GPT, uh, and um, that will ensure that, that you're not going to forget this stuff. You're actually going to learn it. You're just learning it faster, okay? AI is pretty controversial, Okay, it's going to be controversial for a while. Okay, society needs to make some decisions on its usage, but it's here. Okay, at the very least, if it gives you a bad taste in your mouth, at the very least, it behooves you to get a feel for how this stuff works, how impactful it can be, so they can be more informed in that debate. Okay, so that's why I encourage you to do. And of course, you're welcome to ignore it if you want to. <coughs> okay. So this is our schedule. This might be the most important thing uh, on the entire Canvas site. Here's how <coughs> you look at this schedule. It's a vertical schedule, okay? As time progresses, we go down the rows. The first thing you do, move your eyes to the left column of the schedule. Find today's date. It'll be highlighted in red for you. As we get to dates, as we move down the schedule, links will come online. They'll turn into hyperlinks so you can, for instance, get to the entire Lecture 1 agenda where our slides are, where our announcements are, where all the good stuff is, okay? Um, what you do, move your eye down to your column and then move it rightward. If you hit a green box, something important is launching that day at the start of class, okay? In this case, we're launching an Intro to Game Engines reading, okay? That's an optional reading. You don't have to do it, but it will probably enrich your experience in this course if you do it, okay? It's also related to the stuff you'll be doing on these uh, homeworks. Um, now, <coughs> we also have this first assignment that is launching as well. 
you can then go and click on that hyperlink to go straight to the assignment spec. You just follow the spec, do what it says, and you're getting those points. Okay? Um, <clears throat> if you hit a yellow box when your eye is moving rightward, if you hit a yellow box, that's your sign that something is that should be worked on. Okay? Something is kind of in progress. Okay? If you want to know what, you just move your eyes up until you see it. If you hit a red box, it means that the assignment is due by the start of class on that day. Okay? That's the finish. It's a finish line. Uh, in note, it is due before the start of class. So if you get that stuff submitted uh, on exactly 4.30, Canvas is going to say it's late. We're going to say it's late. Okay? And that's a 20% penalty, and that's not super fun. Okay? If you're from 4.94 or 4.98, something that might be a little bit interesting to you is that the physical, <coughs> kind of the early assignments, the non auto graded assignments work the way they always have. You've got one 24-hour uh, period of being late, and then we just won't grade it. You get a zero. For any auto-graded assignment, which is most of the course, um, you can turn it in 24 hours late. You can turn it 36 hours late. You can turn it in a week late. Still the same 20% penalty. Okay? So as soon as you're late, you've got till basically the end of the semester until the auto-grader shutoff day, which is right down here after the exam, to try and get as many points as you can but you're never escaping that 20% penalty, okay? Uh, all right. Okay, so does anyone have any questions on any of this stuff? Yes, in the back. Uh, will, if, for example, you submit before the deadline, uh, the auto-grader will automatically grade it and then you'll get a penalty for not submitting it before the deadline? It, it only considers the overall highest score that you've ever submitted. So if you make a bad submission and get a zero, that's not going to overwrite a higher score that you submitted earlier. Okay. Another big thing about this course is that the auto grader timestamps you based on when it finishes grading you and not when you submitted it. If that seems a little bit spooky or not super optimal, I agree. The big problem we face, and we'll talk about this later, is that... Um, Commit timestamps are forgeable, which means that it would not be that hard to, for instance, um, have the deadline pass, then a week later, create your own commit, which has perfectly working code, change the timestamp to be before the deadline, you submit it to the auto grader. The auto grader kind of doesn't, it kind of can't know whether you forged that or not. Um, not super easily. So anyway, yeah. Um, this is to say, just get your stuff into the auto grader as soon as you can, and you'll be okay. This won't be a problem. Otherwise, if these auto graders are just chock full of things they're grading, and you miss the deadline by a hair because it was super busy, uh, yeah, it's it's sad. Yes. We have a limited amount of yeah. Yes, yeah, so we'll talk about the auto grader and how it works in two weeks when it becomes relevant to you. Um, but you'll have infinite submits per day, uh, and. Um, Basically, the only thing that will happen to you is that the auto grader will start to deprioritize you. So you'll start getting kicked further and further down the back of the list. But if no one's submitted, you're getting graded. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So uh, I think that's pretty much it for that. Um, let's keep going. Let's talk a little bit about this course. What is this course exactly? This course is many things, and some of them might be good. We'll see, okay? So what is Game Engine Architecture? Well, I mean, it's a Game Engine course, right? It's all about Game Engines, uh, and that means several things. It means we're going to be taking a look, and we're going to be talking about the many Game Engines that are out there. In fact, for every lecture after this one, we have a Game Engine of the Day, where I'm going to get to tell some very funny stories about some of these wild game engines that are out there, okay? Because there's, there's some stories uh, about some of this stuff, okay? Um, but we're going to be studying game engines, and there are a lot of really amazing ones out there. And unfortunately, only a few that are really popular have a lot of market share, okay? If you don't know what a game engine is, if you haven't really seen one before, this is what you see from a typical integrated game engine, okay? Uh, which tend to be the most popular game engines these days, okay? You typically have a viewport, beautiful viewport into the scene where you can see what's going on. You have a list view to tell you about what's in the scene in case it gets too complicated, too visually crazy. 
you usually have some sort of project or file system pane, usually toward the bottom. Um, like these UIs are like, it's amazing how similar they are uh, to each other. You're going you're gonna to get a feel for this. Um, <clears throat> but this is basically a folder where you're going to keep your music, you're going to keep your audio files, uh, your texture files, your logic, your scripting files. And then typically, after you've clicked on something, you'll also get a list of details, an inspection, an inspector showing you all the different properties and logic associated with that object. And then you can then edit them and stuff. Okay? Well, typically, in the XR course, we call this the what, the where, and the how. Right? Three questions that are important to kind of figuring out any reality these engines are designed to accommodate. Okay? Unreal Engine... Like, basically the same darn thing, okay? The UI is slightly mixed up, and everything just looks much prettier um, in general, as uh, Unreal tends to do. Um, but you've got the exact same patterns, okay? Godot, the exact same patterns, right? Except now the project pane is kind of in the corner, okay? Slightly. That's it, okay? These integrated engines tend to have similar form because they have similar functions, you ever notice, have you ever seen the very cool kind of fighter jet planes? Uh, fighter jets meant to go through the air very quickly, get into dogfights, right? Um, come out victorious in a skirmish. You ever notice how they all kind of look the same, right? It's because if your objective is to win a dogfight in the air, then over time, everyone's design is going to kind of converge, probably, right? And we see that a lot with game engines as well, okay? There's certain things people want from a game engine. All the game engines try and deliver that. They have slightly different flavors, but in the end, they're all very similar, okay? They have a lot of fundamental similarities. You do sometimes have some really crazy flavors, like, um, oh gosh, what is this one? This is Lens Studio from Snapchat. Okay, if you want to make Lens uh, Studio, or uh, I think they're called filters on Snapchat. Is that right? Okay, I'm not really hip with Snapchat. Um, but they have their own game engine. Can you believe it? To help you make those things. Um, this one is really obscure. If Snapchat has their Lens Studio, Facebook has to have Facebook Spark, which is their take on it. I think they're Instagram competitor to that. Um, <clears throat> and it also has a lot of the things you would expect uh, from a game engine, right? I mean, there's the project pane, right? You've got, I think, your um, objects up here under layers, uh, and then you've got your inspector over there and a big viewport in the middle, okay? Uh, has anyone seen apples? Oh my gosh, have you seen apples? What do they call? Hold on. Reality Composer Pro. Um, so Apple is kind of like games are for are toys for children. Um, so they remove, they don't mention game, it's not a game engine. It's not a game engine, okay? It's a reality composer. Um, and as soon as you see it, look at this. That's just Unity. <laughs> they should just buy Unity if they really want to. Let me get you a quick video. <clears throat> look, look at this. <laughs> the dynamic base doesn't seem to have a material. material. Let's, Let's check, check out, out the content, content library and see if there's any materials we'd like to use. Let's, Let's click, click the plus button in the toolbar to open up. Open up. Okay, so the, like the classic thing to do when you're making a game engine uh, is to uh, steal pretty much everything from the popular ones that exist, and then you change the terminology just enough to confuse everyone. Um, I will tell you, when I was learning Unreal Engine, I spent a lot of time learning Unity and teaching Unity. I learned Unreal Engine for the XR course that debuted uh, a couple years ago. Um, and I tell you what, Unreal Engine isn't that hard. You know what is hard? When they decide to name their move or their dot position function, uh, they name it add world offset. Okay? What? Like, when you search move, I want a move function that doesn't show up. Okay? Uh, and so anyway, the way you name things is a big deal. Okay? And we're going to talk a little bit about naming conventions uh, in this course uh, and how we're going to name things in a bit, okay? <clears throat> anyway, yeah. got to be careful with the side rants. We don't have enough, as much time for them as we would normally have. Anyway, so why game engines? Like, what's the point, okay? I want to show you some footage. This is from The Mandalorian Filming. Has anyone seen that series? Is it pretty good? Yes. like it? Okay. I don't, I don't really watch TV very much, so I don't, I don't know. 
While filming this scene from Disney's The Mandalorian, the actors could see their surroundings, but the surroundings weren't actually there. All of this is just LED screens, displaying backgrounds pre-made in the video game engine. Compare that with this fight scene from Avengers Endgame, where actors jumped around in a sea of green, imagining how VFX artists would make this planet look once filming had ended. The Mandalorian was one of the first major productions to choose LED walls over green screens, and the benefits for the actors are just the tip of the iceberg. LED walls make the lighting better, filming smoother, and in certain cases cost a lot less than using green screens. But to, but to understand, understand why the team behind, behind the Mandalorian chose, chose these LED screens, screens we, have we have to understand just how they work. Mandalorian showrunner John Favreau revolutionized virtual production while directing The Lion King and The Jungle Book. However, the process for these two remakes still relies heavily on blue screen and post-production work. For the, for the Mandalorian, Mandalorian, LED wall technology seemed like, like the next logical step. step. Okay, let's jump. While filming this scene from Disney's, Disney's The Mandalorian, Mandalorian Along with saving time and money, the team developed a system that allowed artists to make changes and control the world on the day of shooting. shooting. Settings, Settings like exposure, colour, animation playback and fill lighting are available, available to the filmmakers at the moment's notice. If they want, if they want to move a mountain, mountain from one side of the virtual set to the other, they can, they can right, there right there on set. Not only, Not only is it helpful for the actor, who no longer has to imagine where that mountain is, but it's a game changer for the director of photography. Because, because in the, in the distance, distance, if there is a mountain range that is a story, a story point, then, then the deep, deep is no longer, no longer guessing, guessing where those elements are. He can, he can frame, frame up to them. The virtual, the virtual set constructed for season one was 75 feet in diameter, 21 feet high, and also had a roof composed of LEDs. The cast and crew refer to this space as the volume. Okay, anyway, the takeaway is this. Game engines have become so powerful, so fast, so efficient, so flexible, so expressive that you can do things far beyond the world of game dev with them, okay? Including real-time filming, which is pretty incredible. You can do architectural stuff. You can do all sorts of stuff. In fact, I think I got a screenshot. When you go to open Unreal, for those of you who choose to explore Unreal this week, um, you'll find that, wait, wait, games are just the top tab. Okay, we got film and live video events. We got architecture, automotive design, simulation. Did you know that um, Epic uh, has like a Detroit office? And they have a Detroit office because they've been chasing the automakers uh, very, very hard uh, to make Unreal Engine like the, the design studio, right, for their future products, okay, for future commercials, simulations, and all that. Very cool stuff. It's pretty amazing. <coughs> and it shouldn't really be a surprise uh, games are and tend to be the genesis of a lot of technological change and improvements, okay? Arcade machines, if you weren't aware, were kind of sort of the genesis of the modern GPU, okay? Interesting bespoke graphics hardware began to appear in arcade machines to give people incredible experiences they couldn't get at home, all right? And they became more general purpose, more generalized, and now they're being used to accelerate AI and do pretty much everything under the sun, it seems, okay? Okay. Game controllers are some of the most popular devices for any sort of interface between a human and software, okay? And this is always funny to see and actually a little bit morbid uh, to see. Uh, but, like, <laughs> when you see, like, military drones and the super serious soldier is, like, using an Xbox controller to pilot them, this is very – my brain uh, uh, starts to, to flip out a little bit when I see that. Um, but video games are the origin of so many important technologies, so we shouldn't be surprised that the same thing is happening with engines, too. Okay? There are two engines that are a really big deal around here, Unity and Unreal. Unity is the star of X494, and Unreal is the star in X440, currently known as X498.003XR. Okay? Both of these are basically not going to happen in this course. Okay? You can use them in the first two weeks. You can study them if you want. But after two weeks, you are making your own game engine, okay? We're going to study for two weeks, but then this becomes what it truly is, an intensive programming course, okay? You're going to write a lot of code in this course, and I hope you enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Um, if you've been a little bit, um, if your confidence in C++ and doing large C++ projects isn't super high, I think this course is going to be very, very good for you, okay? You're going to have... Many files in your code base. You're going to have many classes in your code base. <clears throat> you're going to have a lot of interactions between your systems. You're going to want to think 
about how to organize all of that. You're going to need to think about how to get things compiling. When things fail to compile, you're going to have to really understand why. Okay? You're going to run into some circular dependencies. Who knows what that is? Okay? Not that many of you. They're pretty spooky whenever they show up. Uh, and you're going to figure out how to deal with them. Okay? We're going to help you through that, by the way. Don't panic too much. Um, but this re <coughs> really is an intensive programming course because we are building our own engine week after week after week. You're going to be in the same code base, okay, for about nine weeks straight. And that's going to, if you, if, you, if you take care of that code base, you're going to have a really good existence. If that thing gets nasty, oh, it's going to be a nasty time. Okay, so we're going to practice good hygiene as well in our code bases. Okay, <laughs> like I said earlier, we're going to start with a hard coded text adventure. Got to start with a game. I think you'll enjoy that assignment. Not too tough. Uh, you know, warm you up to back to C++. Um, you're going to then start to externalize data. So instead of hard coding your map, you're going to move it into a scene file, basically JSON. Okay, and you're going to load it from there. We're then going to introduce, and I think people will love this assignment, we're going to introduce the world of uh, 2D uh, aesthetics via SDL, and we're going to introduce real-time gameplay via SDL, okay? <clears throat> we're going to then make this kind of an advanced, continuous 2D engine, so it's no longer grid-based. We'll then make it a scriptable 2D engine. You will have an engine that can run this game, can also run this game, two different genres, Okay? And it's because your logic isn't going to be in the C++. It's going to be in the Lua that your customer, your user, your game designer writes on top of your engine. Okay? Interestingly, in this course, your test cases are literally games. Okay? To make the test cases in homework number seven, I had to literally program this in Lua and put it on top of the staff solution engine. And it's going to be put... Those new files, those images, those audio uh, files are going to be put on top of your engine, and your engine has to bring this to life, okay? And, yeah, each test case is its own game, so I got to design some crazy bullet hell performance uh, testing test cases. It was really fun, uh, but it took, took forever. It took forever, and that's why beyond this lecture, there's like, like no lectures are finished yet. So <laughs> well, we'll get to it. We'll get to it, okay? We'll get to it. <clears throat> toward the end, one of it's very interesting. One of the most important things I think a C++ programmer can understand is how to integrate other libraries. Right? And Ravi agrees with me here. How to integrate other third-party libraries into your code base and get them working and using them. Okay, Just getting Xcode to build your project is like a job. Okay, That's a, that's, that's a challenge. You're going to see. Okay, You're going to see. Um, you're going to get very familiar with IDEs in this course. You'll have to work with three, getting it built on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, and you're going to need to be able to import and learn to import third-party dependencies like Box2D. Anyone know what Box2D is famous for? Robbie? I think it was used on Angry Bird. Angry Bird physics engine. Right there. Yep, open source. Really good stuff. Okay. In the final two weeks, after our exam is finished, in the final two weeks of the course, you will get your freedom, okay? There will be no more auto grading, uh, and you will basically have two weeks to take your engine and add something weird and new and custom to it, okay? Your engines are all going to be standardized. They're all going to kind of work the same way, okay? We got like 60 engines, but they're all basically the same. In these final two weeks, you get to do whatever you want, all right? And you can go and you can specialize them. You can use them for different things, right? You might decide that you don't want Lua. You want C Sharp or Python as well. That would be super cool, okay? Hey, you add C Sharp support, it's literally Unity, okay? <laughs> you can add additional editor tools. Unfortunately, and I tried to get this in, but we didn't have, we're not going to have time uh, to have an assignment where you actually add like a UI, a beautiful UI, and you go in and you can click and drag components. We're not going to have that, okay? <clears throat> Our end game engine is going to be kind of a hybrid between many of the features of Unity, but the UI of like Love 2D or Mono Game, which is to say no UI, okay? No editor. But you can add one in the final two weeks if you want to. That could be your research feature, okay? 
you could target exotic, interesting platforms. Like in this course, your engines must work on Windows desktop, Linux desktop, and Mac desktop. But what if you, in the final two weeks, made it work for Android or WebGL? That'd be super cool, right? Um, you can try performance improvements via multi-threading, okay? Uh, that's a, a pretty tricky tricky thing. Um, JSON is our main configuration format for this course, but it's not very fast. It's very human-readable and easy to understand, and, and you know, it looks great, uh, but maybe you want to come up with a binary format so that your levels load three times as fast as they used to. It's pretty cool, okay? A lot of engines do that kind of thing. <laughs> maybe you integrate some basic networking uh, API calls, okay? So people can make a, a, a decent uh, networking experience, a basic multiplayer game, okay? Maybe you add controller support. Maybe the DDR dance pad, uh, your engine supports that, okay? Um, and so all the DDR nostalgic fans have to go straight to you. You could call it, what's a fun name for like a DDR engine? I could ask ChatGPT. You could ask GPT, yeah. <laughs> let, me, let us know what it says. Um, <clears throat> you could add basic 3D rendering support. Unfortunately, we're going to get to it, but one of the things that I tried to get in, but everyone was like, no way, it's not going to work, and they were right, was 3D graphics are not really a thing in this course, okay? And I know that's sad. It's going to be disappointing to a lot of you. The good news is that next semester, Professor J.J. Park is introducing a new graphics course. And so please look forward to that and after you take his course, add, add the 3D into the engine from this course, okay? And it's going to be really cool. The problem with 3D graphics is that it is a vast topic with lots of intricacies. We could not do it justice, and we would have to give you so much boilerplate, it would have been very unsatisfying to you uh, to make it work in the schedule. So I apologize. Um, it's not going to happen. Um, this is really an opportunity to differentiate your engine, okay, and make it feel special. It's something you can talk about with recruiters, Right. Yes, most of my engine was standardized and followed a course spec, but this last two weeks, I put in this really unique feature, and now it feels a bit different. Okay, <clears throat> This is going to take the place of your final exam. So you're only going to have one exam in this course. It's going to be kind of a midterm, uh, and it's going to happen toward the end of the semester. Uh, then after that's done, you got two weeks, and then you're out of here. Okay, So this will take the place of your final. Uh, I hope that's not disappointing to any of you. We'll see. Um, all right, here's the high-level overview of the schedule, okay? At the end of it, we have to have you ready to go compete for internships with all those Spartans out there, and we're going to do so, okay? So for the first two weeks exploration, it's just we're going to play. Uh, we're going to basically explore existing engines out there. I'll talk to you about that in a sec. We're going to explore existing engines, get a feel for what a game engine is, what are the commonalities that make an engine an engine, Okay, you're going to be looking into Unity. You might be doing some Scratch. Okay, you get to choose. You're going to then spend a bunch of weeks, right, most of the course, making your own game engine from scratch. Okay, and that's going to be, I think, the uh, most exciting part of the course uh, and most satisfying for most of you. Okay, this is going to be building your way up from a simple text adventure game where everything's hard coded to a super expressive engine that allows people to easily build any game's uh, genre of their choice. Okay. We'll then have one week where we focus on a prep for an exam. We'll take the exam. We then have two weeks to do the new research feature, and then you're pretty much out of here. I think I'll hold one optional extra credit game jam at the very end, a game jam where we all use our engines to make a game. Imagine that. Um, and uh, we'll probably make that pretty, pretty heavy bit of extra credit, too. Um, we'll try and schedule it so it doesn't conflict with too many exams. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> and then, yeah, research in those final two weeks, uh, stuff like that. So this is an intensive pro programming course. Part of this comes from the fact that you're going to be writing code that has to work on three different platforms. Okay? That's not as hard as it once was, but there are certain things you'll have to do and take care of to get it working on each platform. Um, and I, hopefully that'll, that'll um, give you some confidence that you can do so in the future. All right? Modern game engines, this is definitely a required feature. Like, it's hard to find a game engine that is uh, only locked to Windows these days, okay? <clears throat> there are three auto graders in this course, and actually each auto grader is for a platform, and each has multiple instances. So there's currently three Windows auto graders, two Mac auto graders, and one Linux auto grader, okay? This is to say that if the Windows auto graders are constantly busy and there's a huge queue, 
and no one is building and sending stuff to the Mac auto grader, you should maybe consider just submitting your stuff to the Mac auto grader. You'll get your feedback way faster that way. Eventually you have to do all three, uh, but um, usually it's not too bad. Um, there are three build systems you'll have to figure out, and we're going to help you with that. Uh, we've got guides and stuff like that um, and troubleshooting tips. You're going to need to get familiar, and you will get more familiar with Visual Studio Xcode and Make, okay? That's been one of the most satisfying things for me, like just working on this course. Like I finally feel like I have a good feel for how these IDEs work. Like I don't tend to get stuck in them for hours just looking through the UI and going crazy. And that's like, I hope you have the same experience, okay? Um, <clears throat> you'll learn about how to run specific logic on specific platforms. Um, this is going to have an accessibility iteration focus. Um, probably the best assignment in the entire course is the assignment where you integrate Lua and start to run Lua on top of your C++. It is extremely satisfying stuff. You'll you'll feel it when you get there, okay? Um, and we're going to focus a little bit on uh, high performance as well. So the auto grader has a correctness requirement, but it also, kind of like 281, has a speed requirement too for most test cases. Um, in general, you have to complete the test case correctly and within 25% of the speed of the staff solution. Our staff solution isn't that optimized, but it is. it does optimize some stuff. Okay, so you will need to think in uh, probably on just about every assignment, at least a little bit about what you're doing from a performance perspective. And because your code base builds on top of last week's assignment, like if you keep doing, you know, non-performance stuff, you can expect to eventually fall very behind. <clears throat> but anyway, at some point toward the end of the semester, we'll kind of pivot from the more traditional object-oriented approach to building an engine, and we'll start to move a little bit toward a data-oriented approach. If you've heard of object-oriented programming, data-oriented programming is kind of an interesting um, counterpart to OOP that is very focused on kind of cache efficiency. And so look forward to that. It's uh, kind of a different way of thinking about how to organize your projects and your objects, okay? Um, timing requirements, I already said that. Um, and again, uh, assignments build on top of each other. Um, <clears throat> this is part of why you gotta start your assignments early. Okay, what happens to you if you have a bad week in this course? Like you just, oh, you started in like the last two days and just didn't get, didn't get halfway finished. What happens to your next week? It's just that much more behind. Yeah, yeah, that's not good. Okay, and this is also the reason we let you submit late the entire semester to help give you a chance to stop the snowball if it starts to snowball, okay? There's only so much we can do though, right? This is a very fast moving semester. Uh, we cannot hold up the assignments just to help you catch up uh, so much, okay? Uh, and so please do your best uh, and try and get um, you know get your assignments done. You don't have to get them perfect, all right? You don't have to get them perfect, but try and do a good job in each week. That will really put you in a good place for the next week. And if you have a really rough week, we got to figure that out fast. So come to office hours. We'll try and get you back on pace. Um, otherwise, it's not looking good, Okay. <clears throat> All right, yeah, that'll that'll be us uh, and you, okay? <clears throat> the good news here is that the auto grader in this course is very generous. The first two assignments in this course are going to be pretty generously graded. They're going to be pretty easy as long as you put the time in. The auto grader is very generous in that it will literally give you the test cases that they're running. You can download the test cases, you can watch your engine fail, and you can ideally quickly debug what your problem is and then get your, your stuff cleared, Okay. Uh, it'll also do some really cool things. Uh, if you, if your engine diverges from the staff engine, it will actually give you a video that shows one on top of the other and shows you the frame uh, that you diverged on and how that frame diverged, okay? Uh, and so the auto grader is really trying to save you a ton of time in this course. Hopefully it holds up and doesn't explode with 60 people. Um, we plan to have 30 people in this course, and so we've doubled that, and that's, um, yeah, who knows what's going to happen. I think we're going to be okay, though. I've done some stress tests, so I think we'll be okay. <clears throat> but let me know if anything goes wrong, um, and we'll be in the office all night trying to fix it. Um, okay, there's also plenty of office hours. So make use of that as best you can, okay, including the two that's starting in 15 minutes, okay? There are a lot of pragmatic concepts in this course, C++, okay? You're going to get a lot of uh, time with C++, 
Uh, you're going to get some time with smart pointers. If you have heard of those but haven't used them a ton, I kind of like to joke that the moment you start using STD shared pointer, it's like you're writing C sharp now. Um, and I think you'll get a feel for what I mean uh, pretty soon. Okay. Um, we'll probably introduce uh, concepts such as object pools, right, for efficiency, reusing objects. Um, we're going to introduce um, some interesting topics like placement new to try and get you a little bit more spatial locality. Uh, we're going to think in general in this course quite a bit about not just creating classes and instances and objects, but where we put those in memory is kind of a big deal, okay, as far as performance is concerned. So we're going to talk about that too. Hopefully that'll be fun for you. We might get to some of this, compile time structures. Generics are very powerful. You can do some pretty crazy stuff with them. <clears throat> to get um, some very efficient code. Um, I'm still trying to figure out where those are going to go. Uh, they might be in the later assignments. They might not be. I'm still deciding. Static, inline, preprocessor, compiler, linker stuff, IDE usage is a big one. The course standard for this course is not C++20. I'm sorry. Uh, it is C++17, though. Um, so you will get some uh, features you might enjoy. Um, you're going to learn a bit about version control because you cannot submit to the autograder without using Git, okay? And so uh, if you're feeling a bit shaky on that kind of stuff, you'll get a little bit more experience and practice with that as well. I highly recommend, and this feels a little bit sad for me to say, but I do like the Git terminal, and I still use it for some stuff. I really like the GitHub desktop application. That thing is good. Nikhil's like, this man's crazy. Um, but uh, inc I encourage you to download it. Uh, give it a try, GitHub desktop. Um, it basically puts a decent UI on top of the nastiness that it can be. It also makes authenticating way easier. Um, okay, so yeah, can't submit without it. You're also going to learn an entirely new language, which is Lua. Now, that, that doesn't sound quite as crazy as uh, you know it might sound, because Lua is a very minimalistic, small language. Uh, that's part of its appeal. It's very easy to embed. It's very fast. Um, and it's, it's pretty fun uh, once you uh, get into it, okay? Um, <clears throat> it's kind of like Python. It kind of feels a little bit like Python if you got rid of the great standard library and like a ton of its features, which I suppose doesn't sound that great. <laughs> but I think you'll be okay with it, okay? I think you'll like it, all right? Uh, and what's really cool about all this is that like I think this is a lot of stuff that employers really enjoy candidates having, right? Uh, it's not the most abstract theoretical stuff in the world. Okay, this, this isn't 376. Um, but I think that you'll find a lot of value in learning some of these more humble, uh, more um, you know, common things if you lack confidence in some of these topics. Okay, so I'm really excited about that. Okay, the expected workload. Hey, this is an intense programming course. It's true. Um, we're aiming for <laughs> about 1.5 hours per week. Okay, or, sorry, no, per day. Per week would be pretty good. Okay, that's not bad. 1.5 hours per day. Okay. Um, and that might not sound terrible, but be careful. You skip a couple days and that's up. It's up to two hours. It's up to three hours. Okay. So please be careful. This is going to go up and down. Some assignments are easier. Some assignments are a little bit tougher. Uh, this first week, I think you're going to be having an easier time as long as you start early. Uh, and toward the end, you'll also have an easier time during research. During that production segment in the middle, though, got to be serious, okay? Very serious. It's a lot of time. I think you're going to appreciate putting that in, though. I think it's going to be worth your while. I really think that, okay? So this is a, an intensive programming course. It's also a pre-alpha course. Does anyone know what that means? I don't know what a pre-alpha game is in the corner. What it, what is it called in like Steam when they release it before it's finished? Is that early access? Yes, yeah. this is a UVM early access course. Thank you so much for your tuition. Uh, and <laughs> no, like here's the thing, right? I know a lot of great students are graduating this semester, and I really think that we need to get this course going, in part just to get more data about what parts of it are great, what parts of it need improvement. Um, and so I wasn't willing to delay this course any longer, uh, and so here it is, okay? Um, this is a pre-alpha course, <coughs> okay? I wouldn't even call it beta, because pre-alpha means it's kind of missing some of its content still. It's not trying to polish things up. 
it's still missing some of that content. Okay. We're there. It's not finished. All right. Why do you release the course then? Well, the heart and soul of this course actually is finished pretty much. The assignments, the programming assignments, the assignment specs, especially in the middle portion, the auto-graded parts, I think you're going to like those. Uh, Nikhil has actually gone through all of those pretty much that I've made so far, uh, and he's done a pretty good job. He's found a bunch of uh, issues with the spec, and things are looking okay. Um, and so the heart and soul of the course is finished, and I think, I think you'll get the most out of that part. We need data for fine-tuning the course further, so we need your help. Uh, and uh, the course is pretty highly requested, so we don't, really don't want to wait. The current status is this. The assignments appear to be fairly high quality, and they are somewhat tested. And so we're pretty confident you're going to have a decent time on those, uh, hopefully. We could be very wrong. I don't think we are, though. Um, the quizzes are approaching being finished as well. Those are going to be easier. We're going to have one quiz every two weeks. Those are not going to be super tough if you're coming to lecture or watching on Twitch, uh, if you are um, paying attention, if you're reviewing some stuff, you're going to be totally fine, uh, I think. Um, and the exam is half finished. What ain't finished at all uh, are the lectures, okay? No joke. This is like I'm running low on lectures. So every week I'm going to be grinding to make new lectures for you as fast as I can. They're going to feel very sparse, and they might not have the flow or storytelling that you expect if you've taken 494. Okay. I apologize for that in advance. Um, that's simply the way things are. Um, and um, we really appreciate uh, you laying good groundwork for the future semesters, which are probably going to be much more polished. Okay. The first round of 494 in my career was a rough one. Okay. It didn't start getting good until semesters two or three. Okay. <coughs> anyway, thank you for your patience. This will not be a 494 grade experience. Uh, there will be extra friction. Lectures will feel incomplete. Some assignments will be ambiguous. Difficulty curve might be slightly odd, but things will improve. And if you let us know that things are a bit off, if you give us feedback, uh, then we can improve them much faster, okay? And potentially even in time for you to enjoy those improvements too. This is to say thank you so much for being our guinea pigs. Uh, we will take good care of you, we promise. Uh, and um, yeah, thank you so much for helping uh, the course improve. It's going to make a big deal to future students, okay? Uh, they'll, they'll owe you even if they don't realize it. So, and I will too. What this course is not, um, and this is, might make us a little bit sad, uh, this is a game engines course, but this is not really a 3D graphics course. And I explained a bit earlier, that's a vast topic and I couldn't make it fit. And also there is a brand new bona fide 3D graphics course coming your way very soon. Okay, so I hope you look forward to that. Um, this is also not a physics course because that, that again is a huge topic. A USC is one of the few game dev programs that also has a game engine architecture course and they have like two architecture courses and then like two physics courses and then like two graphics courses it's just that much content they have to get through we will however integrate box 2d which is a really cool physics engine uh, and i think you're going to enjoy that a lot okay we'll also do some things relating to collisions uh, and some interesting optimizations uh, to make those fast as well okay um the course the heart and soul, again, is the assignments, uh, so um, I hope you'll enjoy those. Um, this is also not an easy course. Uh, I said in my advertising, I think this would probably be an EX485++, maybe. Uh, hopefully a bit shy of the difficulty of 482, um, and that might vary, and we're going to try and keep that as easy as it can be without compromising your outcomes, aka what you learn. Um, but uh, we do think you're going to need about 1.5 hours per day. There are no team assignments in this course, okay? So it's going to be you learning all this stuff uh, and you alone. However, you will be able to talk with your peers. You'll be able to talk about data structures with them. You can talk about high-level approaches to the assignments, what you should maybe do on them. In this course, the rule of thumb is pretty simple. Do not share code, okay? You can share some of your ideas. Not a big deal, okay? Uh, talk about your ideas. Do some debate. It's a really great way to learn. Do not share any code. Okay, don't share any code with your friends, your peers, okay? You do that, uh, you avoid doing that, you're gonna be okay. It's gonna be no problem, all right? And we'll get you to, I think what you're gonna really, I think you're gonna like this engine you end up with, right? I, I made this engine as I'm designing the course, like, and I, I, I feel like 
I don't know. I feel nostalgic about it already. It's like I've never had my own engine. This is it's it's missing features. It doesn't have 3D. It's not that fast. But but it's mine. And I think I think you'll you'll be satisfied by that as well. Okay? The dream come true for me, to be honest with you, the dream come true for me and I think the entire staff, it's like you finish with a pretty cool little engine with a cool unique feature no one else has. And then the summer is here. So like what if we did add 3D? What if we did add Python as a scripting language? Eh? Right? And you can then follow the path of Nikhil right, and Ravi, and you can go spend your summers, your off time, tweaking things and experimenting with cool graphical techniques uh, and really learning more than I could ever teach you. So, yeah. I was just going to ask, um, for like all the stuff we're not going to touch, like the 3D graphics yeah. and uh, all that stuff you mentioned, will there still be like resources that you can like point us to? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, so the question was, uh, for all the things we're not going to teach you or don't have time, will we have some resources we could point you to? The answer is definitely yes. Some of them will probably appeal, appear in the readings, um, but if they don't, you can ask us at office hours, and we'll get you moving in the right direction uh, so you can enjoy that, okay? Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Oh, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention. Uh, my office hours will be uh, tomorrow from 6 to 8, uh, in the Duber staff, either here or in the atrium, uh, if you aren't feeling comfortable with uh, game engines or you want to get a head start, uh, mm -hmm. please come to that. I'm always here to help you. Yep. Make use of your office hours. There are so many tips that we could give you. We can help you fill out your mental model. So if you're starting to get a feel for what game engines are like and how you tend to do things in them, you can ask us questions and we'll try and give you as much confidence uh, and um, fill in that mental model so you can really start to move fast. Okay. Everyone, I don't know if we got. Oh, we got one more quick thing. We got an assignment. We got a. Um, we're not going to have time for an engine demonstration, but I think that's okay. Um, you'll get a lot of experience with them in a bit. Your first homework, it's due Monday. Okay, you've got five days to do it, right? Uh, and it's not a big one, okay? But you get in your hour, your hour uh, and a quarter today, uh, and uh, and every day you're going to be fine. Okay, here's how it works. It's called game engine exploration. It is a brief walk through existing game engines. When it comes to game engines out there, uh, there are basically three categories that we're going to care about. Okay, There are the drag-and-drop beginner-level game engines. Has anyone used Scratch, MIT Scratch? The classic, okay? Classic, beginner-level, awesome game engine. There's also Game Maker, okay? We're talking Undertale, Hyper Light Drifter, okay? Click Team Fusion, that's the crustiest thing I've ever used in my life. I cannot believe that Scott Cawthon made Five Nights at Freddy's on it, and I super can't believe that Freedom Planet got made on it. Okay? Um, go with that one if you are if you're, if you're want to go for a ride. Um, and uh, MIT Scratch, you can choose that one. You can also choose Construct. These latter two are web only. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. There's minimalist engines. These are powerful engines that don't really have an editor. You tend to um, like basically manage things in a folder, a file system. You're writing scripts. Um, you're not really using deluxe UI to move things around and make things. Okay, um, We're talking Monogame, which is famous. It's XNA, if you've heard of that before. It's the open source successor to XNA. We're talking Celeste. Streets of Rage 4, Fez, Bastion, Axiom Verge, Stardew Valley, lots of indie games use mono game. Love 2D, Move or Die, and Pi Game, right? You can choose any of those. And then the integrated engines, Unity, Unreal, Godot, Pico 8. That's a really weird one, okay? Um, you're going to choose one engine from each of these categories, and you're going to make a shoot 'em up or I prefer the name Shmup, okay? Or if you're going for cute aesthetics, it's called a cute em up Okay, and you're going to make that game in all three engines. Okay, and that's how it's going to be. Um, <clears throat> and so choose which of these engines you want to use. And then when you go, you're going to make this little report here. Click on that link. You're going to make a copy. You fill in the red text. Okay, name and date. You're basically making what you see right here. Okay, this is the gameplay you're required to have. I've got video for you. This week, it's super, super simple, okay? You're just... This is basically all you need to make, okay? In three different engines. 
You need to have a player character who moves with the arrow keys. You need to have a couple enemies, three in fact, that move. Uh, they don't need to move toward you. They just need to move. You don't have to do collisions yet. Okay. You do need to have a background image and you have to have background music. And that's all you have to have. Three different engines. Okay. Uh, none of those things are very hard to do in any of these engines, but they're three different engines. So you're going to have to uh, be a bit flexible and you're going to learn a lot. Okay. Ask GPT for tips. If you get lost, consult online documentation. Video tutorials are totally fair game. Uh, and you can come to office hours for help from us as well. Really quickly, there's this hints box at the bottom. And if you choose, for instance, click team fusion, you can click on this little Google document and we will point you to great tutorials right away. That might get you pretty far. Okay. And we'll give you a little bit of help understanding that game engine. Uh, and so that's pretty much it. You record some footage showing that you've done this in three different engines and you're done. Okay. That's it. The uh, week after we'll add additional features. We'll make this feel much more like a proper shmup. And then later in the course, your engine will bring it to life. Okay. Uh, and so I uh, hope you'll enjoy that. Anyone have any final questions before we depart? Yes. Oh, the wait list. Yes. Okay. So um, I expanded the course cap to 60. Uh, and some of those overrides, I think, have gone out, and some people are waiting for those overrides, some not. <coughs> um, I, I, my impression is that my courses tend to get five to sometimes up to even 12 or 13 drops per semester. Um, and so you can kind of weigh your odds if you're still in the wait list, if you're like number 72. You can weigh your odds of getting in, but after a couple weeks, we'll probably have to cut you off. So if you are on the wait list, have a backup plan. Uh, but don't lose all hope, just some of it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Questions? All right. Thank you all. We got two hours uh, here if you want to get started. I'm super excited. I cannot wait. Uh, and uh, I wish you all a fantastic week back. All right. See ya. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, um, you can get these images if you want, but you don't have to. You can actually make the images whatever you want them to be. Um, so if you want those images, you'll find them in the document. So for instance, if you want to use, um, if you want to use uh, Donna as the player character, you can find her sprites here, and you can use them uh, if you want to, right? So it's the animation needed? No. Okay, so we just yeah. just some limits. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you only need to meet the requirements as they're listed in this table. I did some extra stuff because I wanted to. Okay. Uh, but that's a great. Yeah. Kind of the syllabus is not true for now. Oh, all right. Hold on. Yeah, I'll fix that. I'll fix that. Okay. Just a question. Uh, just a second, everyone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, fix so, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm, said, I'm, I'm taking grad now. Oh, oh, no, I, I heard. All right, who's uh, uh, who's next? What's up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like a game. Well, we think we get very high level three, like Yeah, so I checked it out. I'm serious because he was talking about it. They do talk a lot about instruction on the engine, and we'll give you a lot of tips. That's not required. Yeah. No, when he said main structure, I felt that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for instance, the data from the whole time, yeah, we will require you to have certain. A certain approach to how you do it. Yeah, but most of the time, it's a good decision. Uh, and it's I know, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, will so you will yeah. benefit from so most of the cities that you will suffer. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, so, so you can't register until like, you find the hard flow of students. Which is like, do I need to test everything? Otherwise, it means or not. Or what? Yeah, what I should have done is register You try to do a little bit of both. I try to do some planning, but not too much. Because eventually, you have to get in there and experiment. You can think of it like this way. Doing experiments, doing little tests, Yeah, because I was, right? If you want to have a really good plan, you got to get in there and experiment. So that's what I recommend. They are like very open source engines from GitHub and also. Yeah, what? 
In my experience, it's kind of hard to study yeah. existing engines, yeah. source code, oh, so really yeah. 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 yeah, that's a very large like, code. Yeah, it's just super yeah. big code base. Uh, yeah. It's so easy to get lost. It's, it's hard to find the really interesting part. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Here's what I recommend. Yeah. Yeah. If someone yeah. has an open source yeah. engine, yeah. look for an interview that that person is giving. Usually what will happen is like the creator of the engine will give you the only semester that happens. That walks towards the yeah. Okay. Like oh, how God, it works, yes. I've had how execution <laughs> flows through the engine. And that's yeah. the, like that's the fastest like, way to get a pattern for how things work. The good thing has some of those talks. Yeah. The better you have the, like, the structure. <laughs> I need to know the strategy. Even though I'm only doing two projects, I think so. Like, what do you want? Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, this is what's up. Oh, okay. Next time. How's my chance? Oh, okay. 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 Um, I'll hang in there until the ad drop deadline. <laughs> yeah, my impression, I'm not sure when the ad drop deadline is, but my impression is that, okay, what's going to happen? Let's see here. Um, the 30th, huh? Yeah. According to Wolverine Access. That's, um, oh, that's the end of the first assignment. My impression is that, yeah, my impression is that this is going to shake quite a few people, but you'd be kind of... Who knows? Maybe I scared a bunch of people today. I hope Who knows? Like, I, I don't know. I'm not scared. I'm excited. I'm not scared.